talking about the revolution. Speaking of which, the Ron Paul revolution of 2008 is starting to kick into gear for 2012, and already he's getting mimicked. You have to realize, four years ago, whenever he raised any of his positions on monetary policy or foreign policy or whatever, he was almost laughed out of the room. He was derided. He was booed. He was hissed. The, the, the mainstream Republicans just refused to take him seriously. Now they're copying him. And one of the leading copiers is former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, who actually came out on two key Ron Paul uh, planks, if you will, and tried to claim him as his own this week. Jake, I don't know if you heard about this, but this is just great. Uh, Gingrich said, I- I'll read this quote to you. It'll make you wonder if he's the same Newt Gingrich who's actually Speaker of the House, because it certainly doesn't sound like him. I believe that if you believe in American exceptionalism, our rights come from our Creator, that the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution matter, that the Federal Reserve is clearly acting in ways that violate equality, violate the rule of law, and violate the sense of fairness. Gingrich said in a new video, a web video, issued on Wednesday. He's been talking about the need to repeal Dodd-Frank, last year's uh, financial regulatory reform bill, along with Sarbanes-Oxley, the 2002 law strengthening standards for public account firms, hmm. <laughs> along with an audit of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> wow. I don't think I ever would have thought that Newt Gingrich would come out for an audit of the Federal Reserve. And in addition to that, in addition to that, he's saying it's time to bring the troops home from Afghanistan. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, is this the same Newt Gingrich we've all come to hate? <laughs> well, the thing is with uh, uh, Mr. Gingrich is that he's kind of a serial or a pathological liar. <laughs> yeah, that's a good and, way to describe him. Uh, he's, that's uh, kind of gone for quite some time, but what a lot of the politicians will do is things that are politically expedient. And we covered on our new show, I think, a few weeks ago, uh, Newt Gingrich's uh, campaign uh, basically exploded. He had... Dozens of people that just uh, resigned. I think his entire Iowa team, his uh, uh, PR team, person, really. and his campaign, yeah, yeah, and his campaign manager all uh, left on the same day. Uh, and I, I did find out later on, uh, following that announcement, that it was kind of due to the fact that uh, he went off with his wife to uh, Greece, of all places, <laughs> for a vacation. Buy gold coins. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe to go buy gold coins. And uh, that uh, that was a key factor because uh, you have to question the uh, the drive of someone to run for president when they're going off on, you know, uh, George Bush and his. Uh, Many vacations accepted uh, uh, run it when they're in the running uh, for president. So I'm pretty sure that so that probably has something to do with uh, his uh, polling numbers, which are extremely low. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe last I heard they're down in, in, in the one percentile. If that you know, if memory strikes me correctly, and I think it does. Yeah, he's, his campaign is definitely about to go down the tubes entirely. But nevertheless, well, might as well swing for the fences. <laughs> and it's not just Gingrich. There, there are a lot of Republicans who are now starting to speak respectfully of the same things that Ron Paul's been talking about for years and years. How odd! I mean, what do you put that to? Do you think maybe they're actually waking up, or is this just uh, another example of Republican opportunism? Well, you know, uh, Ron Paul has kind of always struck me as very consistent uh, in his views, really, over his uh, 30-year career in in Congress. But uh, so it's not really him that's changing, it's the other folks. And the difference, uh, I would say, uh, and you know, they're all pretty much uh, career politicians, the Republicans and Democrats all together. And uh, that's one of the things that people do to try and uh, survive is, you know, change views to, sort, to suit the people in the party. And certainly there's a very large contingent that, uh, you know, would like to see the, the spending cut uh, for many people. That's probably why, the, theoretically, they're registered as uh, Republicans. Uh, you know, they fail to realize that both of the, the two parties are really for spending more, and there's very little difference uh, between the two. But, uh, you know, we, we the Republican Party historically, really since the 1800s, has always been the party that does for the corporatism and for uh, uh, corporate welfare and that sort of thing. And it was interesting to see also that this week another fellow entered the, the 2012 GOP field, which was uh, uh, John Huntsman, uh, who was um, uh, rumored to be exiled uh, by President <laughs> Obama to uh, China. Uh, to serve as ambassador for the past three years, he resigned uh, to come back and uh, he announced in front of the the Statue of Liberty uh, that uh, he was going to run for president. Uh, he has very little name recognition nationwide, and his use of the Statue of Liberty and even referred to it in a speech was really just because Reagan did that back in uh, 1980. 
Um, uh, Huntsman is a practicing Mormon uh, and has a lot of striking similarities to uh, Mitt Romney. Uh, he was governor of Utah, um, and his father, uh, I think, uh, which is a very important note, uh, John Huntsman's father is a uh, billionaire and uh, founded uh, Huntsman Corporation. So uh, John has kind of grown up uh, working in politics uh, for the majority of his life anyways. So he was the U.S. ambassador in, to Singapore in the 1990s. I worked for the Clinton administration for a bit. And, uh, it, you know, he was, in his speeches, he was given, you know, the same type of lip service. You know, we need to make the hard decisions. We need to, you know, uh, figure out what to do with Medicare and Social Security. We need to, you know, cut the budget um, and that sort of thing. So it's... Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, kind of coming out, and that's some of the ideas, uh, you know, and it is uh, pretty prevalent. And I, Huntsman also, uh, you know, as governor of uh, Utah, he did, in fact, uh, reduce taxes there. He claims to have reduced them by $400 million over, uh, I guess, five years, so that's uh, $80 million a year, which isn't really a lot but uh, <laughs> for a state. Uh, but... Uh, the spending uh, did rise by 10 percent each and every year he was in office. So uh, you know, you kind of you, like you always do what you always did. You always get what you always got. And, yeah, right. Uh, Unbelievable. But yeah, you're right. Uh, in fact, I saw. Uh, I think it was a headline that described Huntsman as the anti Tea Party Republican candidate. I thought that was an interesting label. Hmm. Meanwhile, Ron Paul is not just being emulated by Republican candidates. He's also being emulated by the White House. This is from an article that appeared yesterday in the International Business Times. Only days after Ron Paul famously said his candidacy is a response to endless undeclared winnable war, unwinnable wars dumped on the young people, White House sources frantically confirmed that President Obama will shortly announce his plans to withdraw 10,000 troops from Afghanistan in a manner phased by the end of 2011. Although White House spokesman Jay Carney stressed on the fact that there, this was no immediate measure and that the president was contemplating on making this move for the past few weeks, the timing of the announcement makes it obvious that it is a step taken with the 2012 elections in sight. Earlier, Ron Paul had made his observation after winning the straw elections at the Republican Leadership Conference in New Orleans on Saturday. He was particularly critical of the U.S. assuming the role of a world policeman. He had also opined... Um, Let's see, I just lost my my spot here. Opined about the foreign oh, policy. Oh, you know, he opined about the foreign policy. He said that instead of worrying, oh, I think they misquoted here. Instead of worrying over rising debts from hugely expensive wars spanning decades, we should focus more on vital aspects like the economy. And incidentally, the Afghan involvement alone cost the U.S. government 110 billion dollars in a single year. Very interesting. Not only the Republicans quoting Ron Paul, but the Democrats quoting Ron Paul. At what point are these guys going to get together and say, "Gee, maybe we should nominate Ron Paul"? Well, you know, the, I mean, the thing to keep in mind uh, with the Obama uh, decision, which I do, uh, in fact, applaud, you know, it's good to get, but the whole thing is, is that we already, under uh, President Obama, the day he took office, we had about 28,000 troops in Afghanistan. He tripled that uh, to 100,000 or 99,000, close enough, and just withdrawing uh, 10,000 of them by the end of the year. Um, and then he's also pledging to possibly remove uh, another 20,000 or so uh, by the end of next summer, so that, you know, just in time for the election. So he'll be able to say the whole time while he's running pretty much that, uh, oh, we're dropping it, we're dropping down the number of troops, and that'll kind of uh, neutralize things. But they're it's kind, kind know, of the same way that they cut spending, right? They, they raise it by 100% and then drop it by 20%, and they cut it by 20%. Right, right. So, you know, even by the end, you know, by the time they get the election, they'll still be at least, at least, 70,000 uh, troops in Afghanistan, and that's still twice the amount that uh, was there when Obama took office. But the whole thing is about the spin, and he'll be able to spin it to voters. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Obama is certainly not uh, too bad of a politician, but he'll be able to spin it to voters that it's a, you know, a, a drop, and they're, they're moving in the right direction. I wonder how much that spin is going to work, though, because that is one point that the, the left wing of the Democratic Party has been extremely critical about Obama's administration. They've been very upset about his handling of Afghanistan. And if Obama comes out and starts campaigning on the idea that he actually cut the, the troops down, the, the left wingers are going to know what the reality was. I mean, they're, they're not foolish. They're, they're very intelligent people on that, that side of the political spectrum. And when, once they they hear Obama campaigning on that, I, I can't imagine that they're not going to call him to account. Well, um, I 
I kind of have my doubts, and uh, the reason I have those doubts is, you know, uh, Mr. Obama was able to get uh, not just the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, but he was able to get uh, uh, all the anti-war groups, or many of the major ones, I should say, on his side uh, during his presidential campaign. And it's taken quite a while. There's been some disassociation, but uh, not nearly as uh, as much. Uh, there, there certainly isn't uh, the hatred there, that, or the open hatred that you saw when uh, President Bush was in power. So I think that uh, you know he's kind of doing things politically pretty well. Uh, the the whole problem is that it doesn't really mean anything materialistically speaking for our foreign policy. No. It's still going to be a very expensive uh, war. And under uh, President Obama, we've, uh, you know, we talked about on the show last week how we're spending over a billion dollars uh, bombing Libya, uh, blowing up uh, some civilians as well, uh, which was the whole, the whole thing was that President Obama thought that civilians were going to uh, perish at the hands of the Gaddafi uh, regime. Um, there and you know we went in there supposedly to save them, but uh, you know NATO has already stated that uh, you know they've had a few things go awry and a few civilians have died as well. Which uh, some people would say, oh, you know that's to be expected, it's collateral damage. But I think what is probably uh, pretty true is that less people would have died if NATO wasn't bombing that country, and uh, uh, NATO's of course uh, in the United States is responsible for that and. And uh, President Obama has also uh, he's carried out uh, some a uh, few bombing missions in uh, Somalia, minor, relatively minor, uh, more or less assassination type missions. Um, in Pakistan, of course, there's been these quadrupled uh, the amount of predator drone raids into that country. Under Bush, it was about uh, 40 during his entire presidency, and just in the first three years. Of uh, Obama's presidency, we've seen 180 uh, drone attacks in the Pakistan, and uh, we are also uh, actively building a base, a CIA base, a secret base somewhere in the Middle East to support the bombing of Yemen. And we are actively uh, bombing Yemen and assisting that government against uh, uh, insurgencies and really what's a civil war. So this isn't exactly. exactly a peace president, but no, not exactly. Uh, but in fact, he's been able to president. spin it. <laughs> he's been yeah. able to spin it uh, so far you know, a little bit of a different way. So far, correct. Yeah. I think second term we're going to see, uh, or maybe you know, the, the wild card is kind of the economy. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and uh, that's uh, you know to be seen. But when you add up all the when you add up all of the government spending, and you know this is uh, Obama's budget uh, as much as it was Bush's back then, and uh, the Democrats and the Republicans, but uh, you know when you add up the Department of Defense, when you add up the Homeland Security, when you add up the military retirements from the Treasury Department, which is about uh, 60 uh, billion a year, a very large number. When you add up, uh, you know, our foreign aid. Uh, when you add up the State Department. When you add up. All these other things, like our nuclear uh, missile, nuclear uh, weapons uh, program, it adds up to well over a trillion dollars, and that is, you know, the government spending uh, about three. Their their revenue is about three. They're spending about four. So it's really about at least about a third of what the government is bringing in, at least, is being spent on warfare. Mm, yeah, it's, it's a very significant number. There's no doubt about that. 